Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Undisputed Heavyweight Champion of the World show made for the fans by a fan. I am your host, as always, Richard Tiemann. This is Football and Nonsense. Hopefully no technical difficulties today. The ones that I had yesterday have since been resolved, so we are up and running smooth sailing for the most part, knock on wood, but we have a great Wednesday episode in store for you. Of course, it is Fantasy Wednesday, which means that Brandon is going to join me and we're going to help you push to the postseason because... Fantasy season is slightly shorter than the NFL regular season, meaning that before the NFL regular season is even fully concluded, we have declared a champion for our respected fantasy football leagues. So, he's going to come on. He's going to give you some advice. We're going to hopefully, I mean, at this point, I'm in six leagues, right? I know which ones I'm not making the postseason in. Now, there's a shot for a few, but... You know, realistically, there's too much that has to happen beyond your control for things to actually happen for your control. And that's what happens. That's football, right? I mean, that's the beautiful thing about fantasy football is that you can set the lineup. But beyond that, it's all out of your control. It's a giant gamble, which is why it's been so popular amongst the gambling world. But that will bring us to, of course, today's headlines. And of course, as always, this episode is brought to you by the good folks at mybookie.ag. Holiday cash time. You need it, and I know where to get it. My bookie is the place to score serious cash on your sports predictions. Believe it or not, the holidays are just around the corner. Crazy, I know. Holidays all start with which one? Halloween coming up this weekend. And while that means plenty of parties, gifts, and spending, it also means there's a lot of football, basketball, and hockey games that you can score big on every day of the week. Man up and play like the pros on game day. You can play the money line, side, or the total. My bookie is your hookup for all your betting needs and offers super fast payouts for when you win. Where you bet matters, go to mybookie.ag today. They're the only site I'd recommend. I trust them. And you don't have to take my word for it. Go and check them out yourself. If you join now, my bookie will match your deposit with up to a 50 percent bonus if you use promo code the fan show to activate that offer so visit mybookie.ag today you play you win you get paid and the headlines today <laughs> oh oh my goodness cam newton he just he's his own worst enemy and in fact mark is took t- and i will talk about this uh coming up on his his spot on the show but i just i have little to no sympathy for people who can't get out of their own way. That's why we have the Butt Fumble Award every Wednesday. It's so it's an award for people who that week just really were their own worst enemy. They couldn't get out of their own way. It was embarrassing. It was laughable. And you just want to move on. But Cam Newton's like a repeat offender. And it's all at the podium. And we get it. You know, he's the guy that um, when you're winning, everything is sunshine, rainbows, and big smiles. Right? He's got that cam newton smile he can charm his way out of anything and that's why he's made the list we'll have a new addition to the list today as well but it's his complete disregard and neglect for the fact that okay you may think that you are untouchable but you are in fact very touchable dan and dropped your ass i mean come on now (laughs) yogurt dropped you as a sponsor oh my goodness my goodness my goodness but cam uh answered a reporter's question with next question and then proceeded to abruptly up and leave so i mean it's super bowl 50 all over again man i'm done with this and just up and walks away i love that he can take the time to pick out his press conference attire after games especially the losses but he can't take the time to sit there and think okay if somebody asks me a question i don't like how am i going to respond uh, <laughs> he's not gronk 
Okay, he's not the tight end that's the ever colorful will give you responses that you know are damn near irrelevant to what you're talking about, but yet are extremely quotable. He's not Marshawn Lynch, a running back, who's going to give you uh, it's the same response every time um, that's clinging on to a, a phrase or whatnot. And he's definitely not uh, a, a defensive back or a linebacker that's going to break down the, the game for you in the most technical kind of way. He's the quarterback. He's the one the media wants to talk to the most. And with certain teams, there are certain exceptions. I understand that. Obviously, when it comes to the Jets, Josh McCown probably isn't the guy that they want to hear from the most. But then again, who else is there going to be on that team that people are going to want to hear from? Matt Forte? Sure. Jeremy Curley? Jermaine Curse? Sure. But the quarterback is the guy that you want to hear from. There's only a few teams where I think that the exception is because of who is in at quarterback. Uh, I could see Denver people wanting to hear from receivers. Von Miller, obviously, probably is the most popular request by media for that team. But uh, other than that, uh, I mean, it's... There's, there will always be exceptions. Cam Newton is not the exception, though. Who else are they going to talk to? Keekly? They can. Sure. That's an option. But they also have a quarterback that is the face of their franchise, and he, he loves the spotlight, but only on his terms, apparently. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about that with Mark Istook, as well as what's going on with him. Then, uh, let's see. What else is in the headlines today? Oh, <laughs> Juju Smith's bike uh, has been found. I didn't know it was lost until it was trending. And uh, Mia Khalifa tried to holler at uh, Juju. And it's, he was like, not having it. It's like, uh-uh, I'm young, but I'm not stupid. And good for him. But at the same time, the, the amount of occurrences that Mia Khalifa has popped up in the trending now in regard to the world of sports is a little concerning. Why is she a thing? I get Kardashians, okay? I I will bow out to the fact that Kardashians love their athletes and that some of them are, you know, very much worked into the world of sports. But a former adult film star who has made it her new career to ruin certain athletes, it's just dumb. It really is. The fact that I've given it, minute and 30 here on the show is in all honesty too much time to give something like that so those of you that love stuff going on on twitter i've got something great for you and it's not mia khalifa it's the fact that mojo raleigh and kurt hawkins were going at each other last night and it was great made up for the fact that raw did not invade smackdown i was a little disappointed by that but I think they're building up for something, so that's good. But, yeah, they were exchanging blows. There was a good six-tweet exchange between the two of them. And in all honesty, Mojo Raleigh started it, and I think that it's to keep the whole red versus blue thing going for a while. But for those of you that don't know, Mojo Raleigh is the tag team partner for Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder is the former tag team partner for who? Kurt Hawkins. So, um Oh, Zack Ryder said that he was especially happy to invade Raw to put a good stomp in on a guy like Kurt Hawkins. And then Mojo Raleigh said that, uh, I love that you beat him down. That guy sucks. And then they went back and forth with each other's accomplishments. It was funny. If you don't follow him, follow him because it's always, it's always a good follow. It's always fun when there's Twitter beefs. Uh, but not on Twitter, Martavis Bryant, also a Steeler, speaking of Juju Smith, that led us to this uh, social media discussion right now. He wants out of Pittsburgh, and he has been nominated for this this week's Butt Fumble Award. And we will see what the results are of that when the time comes. You can go and vote on that poll right now if you'd like to. It's up on my Twitter page, probably one of the first tweets that you'll see on there uh yeah there it is you nominated now vote week seven butt fumble award winner is it tennessee versus cleveland a kickers duel uh, that ended in 12 to 9 in overtime is it the broncos who lost miserably to the chargers they were one of three shutouts kc versus oakland with zero time left or bryant's instagram comment saying how much better he is than juju go vote now because we're going to have that probably towards the end of the show after I get done talking to Mr. Brandon. But also, 
because we forgot to do it last night because uh, of all the technical issues and I didn't have the sound bite for it, we will add a name to the list. And I might just save this for Wednesday because we've done it the last couple of Wednesdays here. It's supposed to be a Tuesday segment. But, hey, you know, it is it is what it is. Nonetheless, though, uh, the list is ever-growing. I add one new item. Uh, I can't say it's a person because sometimes it is a person, place, or thing or a group of persons, i.e. a team or whatnot. And uh, great people have been added to the list. It's not a good list. It's not a list you want to be added to. It is the list of fan show. People like Cam Newton, Zeke, I think was the last one to be added last week, uh, OBJ, the Patriots for their uh, home opener that they lost to the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, the Titans for signing Brandon Whedon. So there's been a few different things and a, a few different items on there. Oh, yeah, Clay Travis because he's a giant bag of douche. So who to add to the list of fan show this week? Well, let's tell you a story here. If I was to invite someone to do a segment on my show because I liked what they had going on, I said, you know, I think you guys, I think you guys are funny. I think what you do is clever. It's popular. Why don't you do a version of that on my show? Let's see how it goes. Now, I could approach this a few different ways. I could say, first off, we're going we're gonna to try it one time and see how it fits, but have a few things prepared. And if, if it does well the first one, or if you guys feel like you want to try it again, we'll try it again. I would go into this with the mindset that there will be more than one, because you really can't base things off of just one go at it. You know, people have to, uh, people fear change. Uh, not everybody likes new stuff. So you kind of have to have where you try it on, you pose in front of the mirror, see how it looks. Okay, well, now let's take this out on the town and see how it works. So if I invited somebody to be on my show to do a segment, I would plan on there being more. And I'd say probably three is going to be my max after three. If I didn't think it was working out well, then I'd say, you know, hey, it was worth a shot. You guys have your platform. I have mine. That's fine. We'll let bygones be bygones. And uh, best of luck in our future endeavors. But apparently that's not the case in the world of sports. Uh, glorified TMZ sports at this point. And they have been taking L's all year long. Whether it's Jameel Hill, their layoffs, their shitty programming, whatever. ESPN. They decided to invite the good folks at Barstool Sports, which is one of my favorite follows. Pat McAfee is a contributor there. And they had one episode of this new van talk or whatever it was called. Like that's how quickly it was. <laughs> Dan Patrick was going to be on the second episode, but it was Scott Van Pelt on the first show. Of course, why not? He's the only reputable one uh, left at ESPN, at least in front of the camera on the mic though. Freddie Coleman, my man respect. So they did, they had recorded several episodes. They aired one. And after one episode of this barstool sports van talk, whatever they said, yeah, Thanks, but no thanks. And in all honesty, it was like, what did you expect? I don't know what ESPN expected. It's like inviting LeVar Ball on and hoping that he's not going to be like LeVar Ball. You, you can't do that. You just can't do that. So they basically said that you guys were too barstool sports on this new segment, and we want to try to distance ourselves from what Barstool is. And it's like, okay, well, one, that's dumb. It, it really is. Because you are in so much hot water lately that you could use a good shakeup and the assistance of something like Barstool Sports. Because you guys have mixed politics and bad journalism on the biggest outlet for sports, what used to be news in the world, ESPN. And as MTV as they've gone where MTV doesn't even play music anymore, ESPN's not really even sports anymore, I feel like it's going to take a lot more for us to see the the downfall of ESPN, but it is something I'm slowly, secretly crossing my fingers for because I think that they've reached a point of absolute ridiculous. Trey Wingo, really? That's your guy? Yeah, no, sorry. So, 
You know what happens, ESPN, when you want to try something different? You give it one time to, to try, and you think that you're going to get something different, and instead you get exactly what was probably promised to you and what everyone expected you to get. Do you know what happens when your hindsight is terrible and you just honestly need to stop and, and start from scratch and jump the whole thing all over again? You know what happens when you're just stupid and you've been stupid all year and you continue to make mistakes do you espn you know what happens you just made the list that's right espn is the newest addition to the list of fan show you just made the list I'd like to see them on the canceled list. Uh, you know, when the new TV schedules come out, what got renewed, what got canceled. ESPN. It's not a show. It's a network. But still, it'd be nice. All right. So with that, we're going to go to a commercial break. I will play you the interview with Mark Istook from earlier today. But uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more of the fan show after this. This is The Sheet. It's me all revved up. My face is now red. My ears are just freaking boiling. He's so raw. He's so raw that Scott hates him. Yeah, he had 51 touchdowns, 4,900 total yards. I know y'all like that, but I got to run. And only in Alabama that could happen, I have to say. They're so good, (laughs) man. They would win the Big Ten if they were in the Big Ten. You could be doing something vision-based in front of you and reach down and grab a handful of insane goodness. Give it to him. Kudos. I'm clapping like a golfer. Very good, Johnny. I'm proud of you. Wow. You guys agree on something again? I'm very impressed. Have you ever had a bad week? You know, just you walk outside, step in a puddle. Like, right when you walk outside, I mean, how's your puddle right outside the house? Are you, you stand on the curb and somebody drives by and splashes water up on you? Or it's just raining on you, not anyone else? I, I will tell you, before you go any further... I cannot hear Chad when he speaks. Good. Here, listen to the sheet, man. I don't, I don't really know what we're doing. Every Saturday morning, 8 to 10 a.m., right here on WBLZ Sports. Whether it be your industrial, commercial, or residential needs, Gen Service is the electrical contractor for you. The Gen Service team has the expertise, commitment, and educational years to help you solve all your electrical concerns. They have you in their best interest with helpful suggestions to accommodate your every want. Give them a call, no matter the size of the job, at 740-438-7173. Mention WBLZ Sports, and you'll get a discount. That's Gen Service, 740-438-7173. This is Nick Ficarelli, the mad scientist of sports. Join me and Dr. D. Derek Jones live every Saturday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Pacific, for the Mad Scientist Sports Lab. The big to which... The experiments on the chalkboard, and the guest subjects will be rolling in. Mad Scientist Sports Lab, only on WBLZ Sports, where we got balls. Doug Peffer painting a pressure washing. He has over 30 years of painting experience. He's interior, exterior, commercial, or residential. Doug Peffer covers it all. Is your house looking ug? We'll call on Doug. Doug Peffer painting a pressure washing. 404-966-3361. Mention WBLZ Sports and get a special We've Got Balls discount. That's Doug Pepper Painting and Pressure Washing, 404-966-3361. Check out Thursday Night Tailgate, where NFL legends live on. We bring you five NFL legends every week, sharing their stories and insights, plus our spotlight on the positive. Hear which players are doing great things in their communities. Now on WBLZ Sports Talk Radio and WBLZSports.com. Ladies and gentlemen, back on the program is your favorite of all things football and a little bit of side nonsense with Punchline, but he is the host, co-host of NFL Blitz with the lovely Aaron Coscarelli. It is Marcus Took. Mark, welcome back. Thank you for having me. 
Of course, you're a busy man these days. It seems like every time I have you on, you have added yet another thing to your <laughs> ever-growing resume. What do you have going on right now other than your own I'm podcast? just trying to hustle, man. It's just uh, just trying to stay busy. So between um, – well, right now, it's just a lot of football-related stuff, obviously, middle of the season. Gosh, about the halfway point, which is hard to believe. Crazy. But, uh, yeah, like you said, NFL Blitz uh, every day at – Seven Eastern, four Pacific, live on Twitter, and then all the other kind of assorted stuff going on around here at the NFL Network. So, yeah, you started your own podcast. Congrats on that. I did. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. What was the inspiration there? I think it was a mix of really, really enjoying interviews and <laughs> and, and, and thinking that, like, hey, you know what? I feel like I've gotten a chance to chat with some pretty cool people, but I'd love to take what is a five or ten minute interview and turn it into something much longer, more substantive. And that was the seed of the idea. And then it was just, all right, well, you know, what would the topic be? What would it be about? And and, uh, ended up kind of coming up with the idea for the Dream Job podcast, just talking to people who have cool jobs and trying to get a sense of of what that's like for them, what motivated them, what got them into doing whatever it is they're doing. And uh, it's been a blast so far. A lot of work, but well worth it. It definitely is a lot of work, I can tell you right now. But, uh, hey, it uh, sounds great. The interviews have been fantastic, a, a good Thanks, mix man. so far. So I'm looking forward to it. But you're here to gloat because your Cowboys have defeated my 49ers once again. And this time, just, I mean, I don't know why my team even bothered to show up. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not uh, – I try not to be too big of a gloater just because I've been on the other side of that, especially this <laughs> season. This Cowboys team has just not been the same team they were last year, and I think there's a bunch of reasons you can look at for that. But it was nice to get back uh, heading in the right direction with this win. You know, the wins over those Niners teams of the early 90s were so much more satisfying. Um, But this was a good one just because Dallas has struggled recently. It was nice to see some vintage Zeke because you're not sure how much more you're going to be able to see him on the field this season. Uh, He's slated to play against Washington this upcoming weekend. But beyond that, uh, you know, we'll see what the courts say. Yeah, which is kind of been uh, one of those underlying storylines throughout the season. And as someone who works in the business of sports media, particularly the NFL, you're kind of on the lighter side of things. But which which headline do you prefer seeing as a, a fan and as a media person? Is it, you know, Zeke's court date set or Zeke runs or gets 200 all-purpose yards? I mean, I I hate the court date one for a bunch of reasons, not the least of which is the, the allegations are, are just obviously serious um, allegations that that deserve uh, – that deserve a sober look. Um, And I think when it's a football situation where you are trying to, you want your guy to play for your team or for your fantasy team or whatever, you you don't want him to play at the expense of, uh, of a just punishment, but you also want him to justice to be served and that he gets his due process. So it's kind of the confluence of, of a bunch of different factors there. Yeah, and it's sort of been that, you know, dark cloud above the Cowboys who even with him this whole time because he was originally supposed to be absent the first six games. This would have been the first one that he would return to. But Cowboys are sitting at that 50-50 mark, 500. Uh, You said that there was a few different fingers that could be pointed to what the problems are. What's the biggest one that you have noticed over the course of the first half of the season? Well, I think the biggest problem is defense, but if you want to just say defense and leave it at that, I think you're missing the bigger picture. And it's the fact that they have not played the kind of complimentary football that has uh, would have helped cover up for the defense. And I, to me, that is decision-making on the offensive side of the ball. It's execution on the offensive side of the ball. It's coaching. I think you can look at the Green Bay game and, and play place a lot of blame squarely on Jason Garrett's shoulders for the decision to basically give the football back to the Packers with a minute 31 or whatever it was on the clock and let Aaron Rodgers work his magic uh, after he had basically dissected you in significantly less time when you faced him in the divisional round last year. So, but deep it, it's defense. It's, it, you know, if the defense was holding teams to, you know, 20 points or less, um, you'd see uh, the win column would look a lot different for the Cowboys so far. Yeah. And that green Bay game, I mean, it was another great game, but, clearly too much time left on the clock I mean even three seconds is almost too much time for Aaron Rodgers but now that he has been sidelined for the rest of the season you look around at the rest of the NFC looks like there's a a 
few power teams in the East where your Cowboys are at. We've seen the Eagles play very good ball, and they're 6-1 and one now. Vikings have a good defense. Now, last year you would have said Cowboys, obviously they're a Super Bowl caliber team, and then they didn't make it there. But this year, do you believe that they're a playoff caliber team, or how are you feeling at the midway point? Playoff caliber at best. At best? I mean, at, at best, playoff caliber, which would mean get them into the – wild card round or maybe even the divisional round and then anything after that's gravy. Just I, I don't know how this defense can be asked to to play playoff football. Um, obviously, they still have not played Washington. They still haven't played the Eagles. So you've got four divisional games left on the schedule, uh, which will tell you a lot about this team. But I think right now, how do you look at this defense and have any confidence that they can, they can get it done down the stretch of the season, much less in the postseason? Is there a trade you would like to see them make before the deadline or a free agency pickup that uh, somebody hasn't addressed yet that you think could be the difference maker for the team? Yes. Trade the entire Dallas defense to Seattle for their defense. <laughs> Sounds simple that, enough. Definitely an easy solution. In a I'm not place. asking, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that, that, that just, you know, you could pick several defenses that would actually do the trick for Dallas. Uh, it's just, I think that's going to be their Achilles heel this year. And uh, you'd like to see some of the guys look, the defensive line has had some sparks, no question this uh, year, rushing the passer. There've been some, uh, you know, the way they started out the season against the run also impressive, but when, you know, push comes to shove, when other teams need points, they have not struggled to get them. Yeah. And it was announced last week that Dallas will get uh, the draft. They will host uh, the 2018 NFL draft. Now, since you're a Texas man, your thoughts when you first heard that, and what do you think Dallas will bring to the table as far as a, a fan experience goes for that? Well, I, I I think it's good for everybody involved because it was great when the draft was in New York City, but from a fan's perspective, the opportunity to have this in rotating cities, we saw in Chicago, we saw in Philadelphia, the enthusiasm it generates, uh, people come out of the woodwork for this. It's just a fun, fun thing to enjoy. And Dallas had the Super Bowl a few years back during uh, – out of character uh, winter storm for the Dallas Fort Worth area. So I don't think the fans got the full experience and the draft is a great opportunity for them and for people who want to come to Texas for the draft. I I'm excited about it. Uh, I think that, well, one, I want to make sure that everyone recognizes that it's Arlington hosting the draft, not Dallas, because as somebody who's from that area, <laughs> Dallas will take claim for anything that happens uh, in North Texas in general, uh, but Fort Worth and Arlington are their own cities, and they deserve some credit. So Arlington, I want to make sure to put, punch uh, that narrative to give uh, that city the love. But even just going to Cowboy Stadium and being there for the festivities, I think, is going to be um, – I mean, as a Cowboys fan, I'm biased, but I think in general it's just cool to, to see this go from city to city. I think that's a trend that we should continue. Yeah, is that something that you see them doing for all of the events? I know Colleen Wolf and I talked about it as far as maybe they'll change location for the Combine, maybe even the Pro Bowl will work its way around the country. Like, How far would this go as far as putting it up for bid? Well, the hard part about the Combine is, uh, one, and I could be wrong about this, but I'm not positive that the NFL runs the Combine. I think it's a separate, the National Scouting um, uh, group, I'm I'm, I'm blanking on the name of the organization. So I'm not positive if the league has say over that, but they are slowly integrating fans into that event. And I think they have to be really careful given what it is, what's on the line for these uh, guys coming out of college into the NFL. I think they've got to be careful how much they make it about the fans and not about those guys on the field uh, running the drills, timing their forties, et cetera. So as long as it's similar to what it is now where you don't have a ton of fan involvement directly with the guys, there's not really a reason to move it, but I know that that is shifting. So we'll see how that continues to shift. But I mean, look, the players certainly have been uh, lobbying for pro bowl changes for a while. So I think you'll see that continue to be mobile. Um, but I think if the league wants to continue uh, appealing to fans, you've got to meet the fans where they are. And that's not always in New York City, at Madison Square Garden for the draft. So that's why they've been moving that. I think they've been seeing uh, great results as a result of that decision. Well, the uh, Arlington draft then is something that I should <laughs> take a look at as a Niners fan looks like we'll have top three for sure <laughs> so it might be 
worth the investment. But uh, a couple of headlines today that uh, I'm sure that you guys will cover on NFL Blitz. Wanted your opinion on uh, something that's come up. It seems like a recurring theme lately, and that is Cam Newton. How would you fix Cam Newton if you were someone that I guess could fix him? I'm not sure what you do now. Like, the problem is, I, and I, uh, my understanding is that he spent about nine minutes asking questions or answering questions with the media, uh, which I don't know what a typical length of his press conference is, but nine minutes is a decent amount of time to sit up there and ask questions. I get that you can be done. Just handle it better. <laughs> you're, the face, you're the face of the franchise. And, and some of the money they're paying you is because of what you do on the football field. But a lot of that money is because of what you do off the field and the way that the public perceives you. And I think you can point to Tom Brady and I guess I'll say Jay Cutler as examples of two guys who've taken just opposite approaches yeah. to how they handle those responsibilities. Um, so I don't know what you can say to Cam now that you can't already. I think his apology was – I want to give him the benefit of the doubt that he issued a couple of weeks ago for the language directed at a female reporter. I, I think it was genuine and, and uh, I think he was contrite, but you still ask, then why does this stuff keep happening? At some point you're a grown man. Uh, act like it. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, a, a lot of people would like to take the Marshawn Lynch approach and just, you know, give the same response to everybody until they finally give up. But as a quarterback, you don't well, really have that luxury, you know? Well, and, and hey, you kind of can't have it both ways. Either you want to be the spokesman and the guy out there smiling and the one on the cover of the magazines, you want to be that guy or you don't. But if you are that guy, there's some responsibilities that come with it. And, and at some point, you know, why, why do you want to advertise with a guy who seems sour at the drop of a hat? Um, yeah. So that's if I was his business manager, I would just try to appeal to his pocketbook. All right. He is Mark Istook of NFL Blitz weekdays or I guess uh, Tuesday through Friday and then on Sundays. Or Monday, Thursday, and then th and then super early on the Sunday mornings, uh, the 830 um, Pacific and 1130 Eastern. Gotcha. And that is uh, exclusively on Twitter with co-host Aaron Coscarelli, a sweetheart there as well. So, Mark, I look forward to more of your podcasts and as well as all the other projects you've got going on. Keep us in the loop, but you have a great rest of your afternoon, sir. Hey, thanks for having me on as always. Appreciate it. Not a problem. Take care. All right. You as well. And once again, Marcus Took doing NFL Blitz, hosting his own podcast called The Dream Job. And that has been a great listen as well. So with that, we are at the uh, midway point of the show. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to help you guys out the rest of your fantasy season. We will bring on Bren Raper of Team Fan Show after this commercial break. You're listening to The Fan Show, your home for all things football and nonsense. My special guest tonight, Farouk. Farouk, welcome. He's no expert, but here's the thing. Football and nonsense is what he brings. Sports talk with a twist. It's the Fan Show! Do you know him as Kevin from the League? It is none other than very funny Steve Ranazisi. 99% of the population doesn't know who I am, but the 1% do. They yell and scream inappropriate things at me in public. Kyle Ray, Kyle, welcome. And I was like, wow, I think we just saw the whole Super Bowl, Phyllis. <laughs> it's like that scene in The Simpsons. Like, why rent the movie? I just saw the best part. Funny man, Brad Williams. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, no, I flew in just for your podcast. <laughs> I've heard about this podcast. I've heard it's fantastic. It's Mac and Farva, but they are my special guests tonight. Steve Lemmy, Kevin Heffernan. I was in Mexico for 10 weeks in a Speedo. Like, that's, uh, that, that was me going to work. I was putting on a Speedo. Like Farva is the most fun to play, and it was a blast to do that again, to do Farva again. So then the makeup artist had to put Vaseline on your body, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and then put the powdered sugar on top of that. Is your name really Richard Siemens? Listen live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night on Spreaker.com or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. All right, welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen. He is a proud member of Team Fan Show. He is Brandon, our fantasy guru. Brandon, what do you got for me today, sir? Oh, I think I got lots and lots of stuff. Okay. Uh, this week, this week, I want to talk about trading high and buying low. Ooh, I'm yes, intrigued yes, yes. Uh, because yeah. we've got 
We are officially at the beyond midway point for fantasy seasons. We're at the midway point of the NFL regular season, and so the clock is ticking. If you haven't won yet, or if you've only won one or two, depending on the size of your league and how many spots there are in the playoffs, it may be best to put more energy and emphasis on the leagues that you're in where you've won at least four or five, if not more than that. So Palmer out, and that was one of the big pickups that we saw a lot of people for the bye week purposes. Aaron Rodgers out, that's a big blow. But uh, the Cardinals themselves without Palmer, Adrian Peterson didn't look like he did a week ago. And then, of course, you have guys on there like Larry Fitzgerald and a few other wide receivers that maybe you've picked up to help you get through the bye week. So now that we're in the thick of bye weeks, how do people continue to proceed to get through? And with that, the art of trading, buying low, selling high. Yeah, yes. To uh, hint on all of those things, I am selling on everything Cardinal related. I, I don't want to start any of them. Uh, Palmer ran that team, um, and, and I don't even want to say he was great. He was better than last year, but it was already tough to decide who's who's going to get the ball on that team. Is it going to be one of the Browns? Is it going to be Fitz? Can Fitz last longer than six weeks, which we've all seen every single year as a no? <laughs> um, and Adrian Peterson looks like the Adrian Peterson from the Saints last week. Uh, so I am selling on literally every person on that team. Do not want to start any of them. Um, and other than going against the 49ers, I don't want to touch uh, any of those matchups that they have for the rest of the year. Okay. So you're selling all of the Cardinals. Is Adrian Peterson a trade-worthy piece at all? No. No, no I don't think so. Um, I think he showed us exactly what he is last week. Um, even when he did have that big week two weeks ago, if you watch him on the film, he, uh, I don't know, it looked like he was trying to pull off the moves that he could five years ago. Um, still staying shifty and, and high-legging it so he doesn't get his legs caught, but he just looks slow. He just looks slow to me. So I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not buying him, and I think he's not selling for for much of anything at all. Okay. So for those that lost Carson Palmer, Aaron Rodgers, and of course maybe have been caught in the mix of having to go with someone subpar, your most recent article did touch on a couple of quarterback options. You said that surprisingly you were very high on Josh McCown and then also Tyrod Taylor, who I think Tyrod has been kind of right in the middle as far as he can be great He could be really bad, but he's consistently been like right in that middle. If you need 15 points in fantasy, he's the guy that's guaranteed to probably give it to you. Why did you come up with those two? Because it seems like, you know, there's a few other. We've seen a lot of young quarterbacks. Uh, Matt Moore is now going to start in place of Jay Cutler, and he has had his rapport built with different members of the Miami offense. But what made you settle on McCown and Taylor? Sure. So, um, first off, I, I don't understand how Taylor keeps doing it. Uh, I think his wide receiver core keeps getting worse year after year, and he still continues to produce. Um, the thing about Taylor is he can throw for 150 yards and still put up 17 points. So his uh, ability to run the ball um, and the focus on McCoy that defenses will place, uh, I believe, opens up quite a lot for him. Um I mean, his wide receiver core is so terrible. I just don't understand his ability. Um, but, but he's so consistent. Every single year we have this conversation. Uh, as far as McCown goes, a big thing that I'm buying for him is the matchups that he has for the rest of the year. So if you are looking for someone to hopefully get you over the hump for playoffs, or if you're looking for someone to get you through playoffs, uh, his next games are Atlanta, Buffalo, Tampa Bay before his bye week. Um, those are all pretty serviceable uh, defensive matchups. And then he has Carolina and Kansas City. Uh, I believe Kansas City allows the most touchdowns uh, through the air. So he's got some pretty great matchups coming up. Uh, That would definitely be the first person that I start uh, on that list of of waiver wire pickups. Okay. 
So let's talk about the trades because let's say you have a team that was made up of Tyrod Taylor, Mark Ingram, you've got Antonio Brown, and then you've got, uh, let's see, who's another hot wide receiver right now? Oh, we'll throw Julio Jones out there. And then you've got Brandon Cooks, Zach Ertz. So these are, you've got a couple of the top names, a couple in the middle. And if you're a team that has a winning record, probably projected to have a top three seed in your playoffs, who would you try to trade for and at what position? Mm, with that lineup, I'm either getting rid of Jones or Cooks. So I think um, for teams that are struggling to stay in the playoffs or, or on the brink of staying in there, um, there are quite a lot of moves you can make to get there. If you're at the top of your league, uh, I, I would stay put, but there are definitely some moves that you could make. So the number one option that I use for when I look at wide receivers and who I want to pick up is targets in the red zone. That being said, the people that have the most targets in the red zone will surprise most people. Uh, you would think Antonio Brown, Julio Jones, Mike Evans, you know, those, those elite wide receivers. But the top two are Devontae Adams and Cooper Cup. Uh, we, I was high on Cup about week two or so, and he kind of fizzled out. Um, but he has 13 red zone targets. That uh, translates to, to quite a lot of targets that have the opportunity to score, which, um, you know, for a bottom-end wide receiver, that's all you're looking for. Other options to pick up for wide receiver, I'm looking for players that uh, have quite a lot of yards and targets, but not a lot of touchdowns, and maybe their owner will evacuate because they don't think they're a scoring threat. So that would be uh, Adam Thielen. Uh, Keenan Allen would be great if, if somebody's willing to get rid of him. He only has one touchdown, um, but he is you know, a top 10 wide receiver in yards so far. Okay. Uh, and what what might surprise you is uh, Robert Woods has one less yard than DeAndre Hopkins, even on that high-powered offense. So there's there's quite a lot out there that um, all they have to do is turn around their red zone completion percentage uh, or get more targets in the red zone, and those players are putting up um, you know elite numbers, Antonio Brown type type numbers if if they can get those looks. Okay. Now, moving into the home stretch of this fantasy season, of course, there's going to be a lot of talk about, you know, the scramble to the waiver wire to pick up who you can. But I think we're, we've reached the point where there's less and less you can do with the waiver wire and more and more you could maybe do to trade because we will have a trade deadline. Uh, just like with the regular NFL. So a few names here mm-hmm. that have come up on respected, you know, fantasy podcasts and discussions. Uh, the tight end position, obviously it's a mess. Vernon Davis, do you buy or sell that name? Uh, I sell that name, although he did look really, really good uh, last week. Um, and I do know that his average yards per catch is somewhere around 20, which is completely absurd. Um, I, I think that offense is in a transition, um, trying, trying to get that wide receiving core going. Uh, that, that is a name that I am, I am not buying. Okay. At the wide receiver position, I think we've talked about this before, but will Fuller buy or sell him? Fuller I'm buying for the time being, and I wouldn't mind starting him, uh, even this week. So they're, they're against the Seahawks this week. Uh, and that, I think that might be one of the games that surprised people. That may be a shootout rather than uh, a major defensive battle between those two. Yeah, very well could be. Um, The next name is Mark Ingram for the running back position. Yeah, so Ingram's an interesting one. You know that he's going to get all of the red zone carries, which is um, a big factor. Uh, Kamara is actually one of the highest targeted running backs in the red zone with eight. Um, but he only has one touchdown, so it doesn't appear that teams are allowing Kamara to get close to the goal line when he's back there. Uh, it might be one of those situations like Tariq Cohen where when he's back there, you know what they're going to do. He's not running, he's catching, so they, they spy him uh, for every play. Um, so that being said, I, I like Ingram a lot. Uh, this is one of the first years that he hasn't had a running back breathing down his neck that can run, uh, so I, I would pick him up and start him every week if I could. Okay, LaShawn McCoy. 
McCoy, I'm definitely buying. Um, the guy can just ball out. I, I don't even know what else there is to say. That offense runs through him. Um, Taylor's great, and he'll run, but uh, it has to go through him, and he is the only one that can produce on that team. He is probably the best floor player in the NFL currently. You know it, you're going to see get something every week. Okay, and then now after two losses, people are starting to guess, wonder, be a bit concerned. But at the quarterback position, Alex Smith. Alex Smith, yeah. So I, I think he will um, bounce back. I'm fine starting him. I'm okay uh, starting him. If there's somebody else out there, oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm not super, super fine starting him. But the... Chiefs have the exact same kind of mentality when it comes to offense. So they have their their running back that can pound the ball. They have their running back that can catch. They have a possession receiver. They have a speedy outside receiver. And then they've got a huge tight end. Um, that is the formula for success in the NFL. And also their defense allows a whole lot of touchdowns. So um, they're, they're going to have to pass the ball more often and, I think he he has the talent to be at least startable in leagues, but there is no way he's going to hold uh, that, that number one overall position in quarterback scoring for the rest of the year. I would I would be confident putting him in um, top ten this year, though. Okay, and now a couple of um, you know either or because it's come up this week. So on the NFC side, we have Murray and McKinnon. And then on the AFC side, we have Richard and, um, wow, his name just escaped me, but the other running back for Oakland, Washington. There we go. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. Those are tough. So um, even when I brought up Murray the first time on the waiver wire articles, I, I made sure to say that the Vikings love McKinnon. He's not super flashy, but they – they just love that he knows the playbook. They know exactly what they want to do. He produces. Um, Murray had a better week last week, but I think McKinnon will always have those third down passing plays and protection plays. That being said, I do believe that the Vikings get back onto it offensively. I think that they should have digs this week. They were He was traveling with the team. Um, so I'm thinking that they get into the red zone more often, and I believe that Murray will have uh, the better week. Okay. As far as Oakland goes, um, man, that's a crapshoot. I wouldn't want to start either of them. If I had to, the one person that did kind of impress me last week was Washington. Um, but it was really hard to tell what you were going to get on each play. Sometimes he got hit in the backfield, and he looked more of like a Frank Gore type where, you know, if they get to you, you're falling. Um, but on other times, he, he ran people over. So I don't know what you get out of him. Uh, I think time will tell, and I wouldn't be confident starting either of those players. Okay, and then who's the hotter pickup right now, Kenny Stills or Juju Schuster-Smith? <laughs> oh, man, that's a tough one. Okay, so I'll give my opinion on both of these. I am not buying Juju currently. I think he is um, a better real-life player than he is a fantasy player, even with his awesome celebrations for touchdowns. <laughs> Uh, he is a touchdown-dependent wide receiver, so he's more like a, a tight end. It'd be like you're starting a tight end, hoping for 40 yards or something. Um, that offense runs through two people, and there's a reason Bryant wasn't getting the ball, and he is way more talented than Juju. As far as skills goes, uh, I am I am heavily buying on him to the point where I may start him over Chris Hogan this week. I know, call me crazy. Um, but like I said, I think that team wins the division. I even said that, what, four weeks ago, five weeks ago or something. Um, and him and Matt Moore have real chemistry. So he, he scores a lot of touchdowns when Moore's in. Um, if Pouncey is, is still having some health issues, then they're going to throw more than they run. And I think that that team uh, – takes the game this week, and I also think that Stills has a pretty big game. Okay. So there you have it from the fantasy guru himself, Brennan Raper, who you can find on Team Fan Show at thefanshow.com. He's got his own tab, the Fantasy tab. Any 
parting words or final thoughts uh, for this uh, push to the postseason for fantasy? <sighs> yeah, don't trust Patriots running backs. <laughs> 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 ever. Just stop. Stop trusting them. Never, ever, ever trust the Patriots running back. Oh, uh, I tell you, <laughs> that is very true. Just like never trust the San Francisco wide receiver. So that will uh, yeah. do it for the fantasy portion of this Fantasy Wednesday. Uh, Brandon, I, I thank you. I hope you're enjoying everything down in Florida, but I'm sure we'll talk to you again real soon. I'm looking forward to your next article to help us uh, you know, secure our playoff spot and then maybe even a deep run and a championship to top it all off. But he is the Fantasy Guru for Team Fan Show, thefanshow.com slash fantasy. Go check it out. Thanks, Brandon. I appreciate right. it. Yeah, thanks so much. See you. All right, folks, and that will bring us to the end of our program. We've got one more thing to do on this Wednesday, and that is the Butt Fumble Award. That's right. You nominate, you vote. And this week, oh, man, there was a moment where I actually had to ask you, Fan Nation. I said, I cannot recall a Butt Fumble worthy moment. Now, of course, in the three seasons that we've done this the the show was originally called the butt fumble show it was a podcast that came out once a week and i figured it would be sort of a a nice you know well-kept secret god that's a terrible (laughs) way to put it uh a a nice pun uh, a play on words a name that people that are true fans of the nfl would know and recognize and would get that it's supposed to be a humorous take on the world of football. But then, of course, um, I got bigger and better guests on. The show has evolved ever since. Did the rebranding. It's now the fan show. But I wanted to keep a piece of the Butt Fumble show with me, so decided that uh, we were still going to have the outro be what used to be the original podcast intro. That's what you hear at the end of each show. And I wanted to do the Butt Fumble Award that we did um, every week on the show. So, uh in the three years that we've done it, there have been some weeks where nominees were better than others. There were some weeks where it's like every nominee deserved to have its own award because it was that good. But this, there were some weeks, just like this week, where it seemed like nominees, there weren't any. People, for the most part, pretty much played it rather cool. But still, I asked you, I said, Fan Nation, help me out here. What have you got for me? And with that, your nominees for the Week 7 Butt Fumble Award are as follows. The Tennessee Titans versus the Cleveland Browns, a game that turned into a kicker's duel. It even went into overtime, and then Tennessee would win it 12-9. to Not a single touchdown was to be found in this contest, and the Browns continue to rack up the L's. They are now the Cleveland Browns. No W's yet. Next nominee was the Denver Broncos for getting shut out by the Chargers. This game should have been easy for them, but keep an eye on the Chargers. They have won three straight. The Broncos, I think they're in trouble right now, but we shall see this next week. Big game for them, the Chiefs and Broncos. We will have a lot of questions answered based on that. The next one was KC versus Oakland. Speaking of Kansas City, this game went so late, and it came down to the last less than a minute. In fact, there was no time on the clock at one point. I think they still managed to get three plays off because the Kansas City defense kept holding the offense for Oakland. But finally, Oakland, Carr to Crabtree, touchdown, kicked the extra point. They win by one. 31-30 was the final score there, but man, was that just a cluster of a mess with no time left. Like, the game, by regulation, was over, but it was still going. And then, of course, the last nominee here, Bryant's Instagram comment. And, of course, we all know that Martavis Bryant has not been happy with Pittsburgh. He wants the ball. He thinks he can be a difference maker. And if he doesn't get the ball, if he doesn't get his money, he wants out. So he went and responded to someone's comment on an Instagram post saying that he's better than Juju and that he should get paid. And if not, he wants out. And it's led to just a whirlwind of controversy. So you nominated, you voted your winner for the Week 7 Butt Fumble Award by 
34% goes to... Martavis Bryant! Congratulations, sure, sir. Your inability to keep your feelings on the field and in the world of social media has earned you the Week 7 Butt Fumble Award. Congratulations, sir. You have definitely earned it. And ladies and gentlemen, that will do it for this Wednesday edition of The Fan Show. I invite you all to tune in once again tomorrow night for our last show of the week. I've got a couple of special guests for you. It's going to be a great Thursday. We're going to bring this thing home, including a surprise guest who I was very excited to book for the show tomorrow. So that'll be a lot of fun. Got a great weekend ahead. Uh, There's great football. We will do Fan vs. Fan Show tomorrow night. But don't forget to check out the Instagram and Snapchat. Both can be found under the Fan Show. That's one word, the Fan Show. Like the Facebook, facebook.com slash Fan Show Official. And, of course, follow me on Twitter at Fan Show Official. You can listen to me live on Spreaker.com or tune in under the Live tab on thefanshow.com, which is your home base for all things football and nonsense. And if you missed any of tonight's episode or any episode in the past, you can, of course, subscribe to the podcast either on Spreaker, iTunes, or SoundCloud and catch replays on WBLZ Sports as well as iHeartRadio. So the, there's so many ways to listen to the fan show. I'm surprised more people don't do it. But, hey, we're moving onward and upward. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, best of luck to you and yours. Don't forget to go and check out mybookie.ag, the world leader in online betting and gambling They are built on the three R's, reputation, reliability, real, fast, payouts. MyBookie.ag will match your bonus up to 50% when you use promo code THEFANSHOW. You score, you win, you get paid at MyBookie.ag. So go Niners, and remember, it's all fun and games until you butt fumble. Good night, folks. Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show.